I'm Samantha Abraham, CEO of My Paper Pusher with your nonprofit tip of the week. Sometimes your board of directors cannot attend every board meeting due to conflicts with work, family, or day-to-day -day life. Take advantage of the free resources available to you and your organization for board meetings, such as a conference call line. When hosting your conference call, there are three important tips to ensure that the call goes smoothly. First, encourage board members and guests to mute their phones when they are not speaking. By muting their phones, the background noise will be reduced and avoid unnecessary distractions throughout the meeting. Second, ensure that everyone involved in the call is using a landline phone. Cell phones easily drop calls, which can create a disturbance during the meeting if individuals have to call back in. And last, during the actual board meeting, place the landline phone in a central location of the room. This will allow all members to be heard clearly by the individuals on the other end of the conference call. Using these tips will allow all of your board members to participate in an efficiently run board meeting. I'm Samantha Abraham with My Paper Pusher, where you can consider it done. I'm Samantha Abraham, CEO of My Paper Pusher with your financial tip of the week. Why should you keep good records and books for your organization? Good record keeping does more than satisfy the requirements to keep your IRS tax exempt status. It provides the data needed to evaluate your mission activities and determine if the desired results are being achieved or what needs to be improved to deepen your organizational impact. Measuring outcomes empowers leadership to make better strategic decisions, report achievements to funders and donors, and tell a compelling story to maintain public support. Superb books and records also sustain organizations by tracking from where their funds come so that the organization can keep current donors and find new ones while also generating the data to monitor budgets, prepare financial statements and tax returns, and substantiate any unrelated business income and expenses. The time, money, and resources spent on bookkeeping and record keeping is a wise investment into the sustainability of making an impact in our communities by developing lasting nonprofit organizations. I'm Samantha Abraham with My Paper Pusher, where you can consider it done. I'm Samantha Abraham, CEO of My Paper Pusher, with your financial tip of the week. Now that you have good accounting records, what do you do with all those documents? It's a best practice to have a written document management policy that describes what types of records and documents to keep, for how long, and schedules what to do with those records after that time passes. On the Form 990, the IRS asks whether an organization has a document management policy, and in its instructions, it describes it as, a document retention and destruction policy identifies the record retention responsibilities of staff, volunteers, board members, and outsiders for maintaining and documenting the storage and destruction of an organization's documents and records. Adopting a document management policy is a key governance step that will serve as a protection for the organization, its staff, and its board. It's a worthwhile investment of time and resources to craft a policy that will effectively apply to an organization's specific record-keeping requirements. Remember that electronic documents are equally governed by these adopted policies, and email messages count as documents too. I'm Samantha Abraham with My Paper Pusher, where you can consider it done. I'm Samantha Abraham, CEO of My Paper Pusher, with your nonprofit tip of the week. Every board meeting needs to have board minutes, and these meeting minutes are an important way to log motions, agendas, and decisions made throughout the life of a nonprofit organization. Make documenting board meeting minutes easier with these three ideas. First, have a board member bring a tape recorder to every meeting. Place the recorder in a central location to capture all the conversations had throughout the meeting. Second, if your nonprofit organization uses a conference call line, Use the recording feature to record the meeting, which will also clearly capture the board members who needed to call in and speak. Third, even with having a recording of the meeting, it is still important to take physical notes. Ensure that your secretary takes notes to assist with producing the final board meeting minutes. Remember, good minutes are important for effective organizational management, and implementing these three techniques will avoid potential confusion, problems, or conflicts. I'm Samantha Abraham with My Paper Pusher, where you can consider it done.